Aloha everyone, this is May 14th and 15th of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. In this episode we're going to be looking at fissures 16, 17, and 18 a little more closely, and also the emergence of fissures 19 and 20. Up at the Kilauea caldera, the ash columns that had been produced over previous days are intensifying. Tina Neal here, who is the scientist in charge of the USGS during the 2018 eruption, is giving a little overview on the summit conditions and the hazards that are produced by these ash plumes, which are raising about three to 4,000 feet above the ground at this point, and are gonna intensify as the days progress even. We see here just how high these semi-frequent columns are rising above the ground. Back in the Lower East Rift Zone, at the site of the eruption, Fisher 17 remained active overnight, producing a slow, viscous lava flow that moved to the east. Fissure eruption has yet to consolidate around a single vent, remains active across most of the 1,000 foot span. Fissure 17 essentially has two major aspects to it. First is the 1,000 foot long fissure line, still erupting, producing lava flows. Second is the booming vents upslope of it. Just on the most malka part of the fissure, these areas that are producing tremendous explosions uh, can be heard from as far as Hilo, these things are incredible. May 14th also has the opening of Fissure 19 on the edge of PGV inside the Lani Puna Garden subdivision coming up under a home destroying it entirely. But the eruption at Fisher 19 is relatively short-lived on May 14th. Back at Fisher 17 is where the action is. There's fountains now several hundred feet tall. You can see these Norfolk pines in the foreground being dwarfed by the Fisher vent behind them. These vents are starting to escalate in intensity. And the booming persists. The booming is going to persist for days and days. One of the things we figured out later was that Fisher 17 was unique, not just to 2018, but in Kilauea in general. Fisher 17 produced an andesite eruption, as opposed to the more common basalt type eruptions that Kilauea is known for. Andesite is more evolved, has a higher silica content, lower gas, so similar to the magma that erupted in the very beginning of the eruption that was determined to be stored in the rift, left over from the 1955 activity in the Lower East Rift Zone, this andesite deposit has been stored in the rift for a considerable amount of time, but it's probably older than 1955. It might be from the 1924 intrusion. It might be even older than that. We just don't know. There is no point of comparison to do a chemical analysis on to contrast it with. This thermal map from USGS shows Fisher 19 in the bottom left in Lani Puna Gardens, and then Fisher 17, which is still active and producing a slowly advancing lava flow moving towards the east in the general direction of Kapoho. And by morning, the next day, we can see just how far that flow has advanced. It's not moving quickly, but the people in Kapoho are definitely keeping an eye on it. Uh, that is one of the low points in the area. And then we have the emergence of Fisher 20 as well on May 15th. In Mick Calber's overflight, the morning of the 15th, you can see Fisher 17 is significantly less active. And there's a tremendous amount of gas being emitted from the Fisher line. By this point, the flow front of Fisher 17 has stalled out, but Fisher 17 remains active even though it's waned off from the activity of the night prior. The thing we need to talk about though is all the homes are along the perimeter, right? These homes are within range of the explosions that are catapulting debris and giant rocks in their direction. Now these homes, some of them are having rocks fall through the roof, through the drywall into the floor and it creates a hectic situation on the ground. So part of the craziness around Fisher 17 was a situation that happened with the homes that you see in the background just behind the lava flow here. These homes were being pelted, particularly the one 
closest to the lava flow with flaming rocks and these things are more like boulders that are going to set the home ablaze if it weren't for the man that was protecting it, a guy named Daryl that had been there for over a day and had put out several fires up until this point. So he's sitting up on the second floor patio on a couch when Fisher 17 manages to hurl a rock that flies through the opening between the railing and the fascia and strike Daryl on the leg, shattering his leg. And this was really a incredible hit. For him to get hit where he was, I've seen the home after the eruption. It was a one in a million shot. The trajectory and the velocity that was required to get in there without hitting anything first was simply incredible. Thank you for joining us. This will do it for May 15th and 16th. Fisher 17 is not done yet. It will be active for the next couple days. In the next episode, we will also be covering Fisher 17 a little more. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, mahalo.